Do you want to learn effective massage therapy techniques to help address neck and shoulder pain and keep your clients coming back for more and more? Then tune in for more. I'm Christopher Brunner with the Muscle Doc Method and today I'm going to be covering how to massage the neck and shoulders and upper back for your clients. Um, this area right here is going to be a common area of dis discomfort for just about everybody. I think we can relate to, uh, you know, neck discomfort probably uh, most commonly up in here, here in the mid back and then uh, into our traps right here. So uh, today I'm going to talk about some just, uh, I'd say beginner to just entering intermediate level massage therapy techniques. Um, my advanced courses, of course, are uh, available online and in-person seminars. Now, what I think is really nice about this area of the, of the body is, um, you know, when you can sit down and relax into your position. And what we're going to start off doing is just real nice, mellow uh, strokes down here through the traps. We're going to be working in here and uh, getting into that levator attachment there on the scapula. And moving through this trapezius here. And I like to go downwards and out towards the body, just flushing this area out. And then I'll come in through the opposite uh, direction with the opposite hand. And you can feel that tight tension getting into this posterior scalene and into the levator. I'm going to move up in here through the splenus capitis. And get just below the, uh, the hairline here. And we're going to take the, uh, the pads of our fingers. We're just going to move along that uh, border. And I like to start from the mid uh, from the spine, move myself, uh, work my way out, and then work your way back in. And then you can find that real yummy spot that everybody enjoys. And if you've ever experienced any type of kinks in your neck, you'll know that area right back there that you're pressing on and kind of has a nervy sensation to it. Just work into this space right here. Now you can come down and now you're working and you can feel that meaty part of the levator scapula here getting into the uh, scalenes a little bit. And here I like to apply circular motions and I just have a firm pressure, nothing aggressive, nothing too light or soft. You really want the, you really, from here, you start to feel out the uh, patient's, uh, you know, comfort level and just really getting set, settled into myself and attuned to their body as their nervous system starts to uh, shift into a more parasympathetic state. And then we're going to come down here and work these traps again. Give this area a break. We can come even uh, move down here towards the uh, super spinatus muscle here. And start to kind of gauge what uh, the tension is like in this area. Are you noticing any type of adhesions between the muscle tissues? You do have this junction that is real common here with the uh, levator scapula and, uh, and the traps that uh, tends to get pretty knotted up. And 
And we're going to switch our position back to the other side. This area also tends to be uh, quite tender for uh, those who spend a lot of time uh, reading on uh, laptops or computer screens. There is a nerve that uh, innervates uh, this area that uh, is connected to the posterior eye. So that's why sometimes they'll feel that stabbing uh, pain behind the eye when they experience headaches. So again, working through this area in a nice circular motion with the uh, pads of my fingers. And typically I'll spend about five minutes on this side and then I'll spend another five minutes on the opposite side. But for demonstration purposes today I'll just be doing this one side. Let's move to the other area of the uh, upper back. Next we're going to come to a standing position and we're going to be working the, uh, the mid and uh, low traps here, getting into the rhomboids and uh, getting into some of the uh, rotator cuff muscles as well. So we're going to go ahead and apply our oil and just get everything smoothed out real nicely here. Um, I like to make sure that I have a nice glide over the muscle tissue um, where I'm not just getting, um, you know, stuck firmly into it or just sliding off. So nice balance. So we come here and I think everybody really enjoys having this area of the neck massage. Just feels nice and relaxing. And this is an opportunity to uh, target this area you know, working uh, both sides at the same time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start using our thumb pad here. And one thing I want you to notice through this demonstration, the various uh, hand techniques that I apply. We don't want to repetitively use uh, the thumb over and over when we can use our fist, we can use our elbow, we can use the pads of our fingers. So we want to spread that workload out so we don't have uh, just you know wear and tear on a particular joint. So now we're going to come in and I'm just slightly off this uh, scapula here. and. You have that thoracic nerve that rolls through here and we're just going to apply a bit of firm pressure. So my thumb is the guiding hand and I'm applying more pressure downwards with my left than I am with my right hand. So again, my right hand is firmly into that tissue but it's my left hand that's pushing down and gliding that thumb forward. Now what we want to do is take our fist and we're going to glide it over those traps. Nice firm glide pushing into the tissue. I typically do three to five passage. Good. Now, what we want to do, and everybody loves the elbows. It's a hate-love relationship with my clients. They hate it and love it all at the same time. Now what we're going to do, we're going to firmly slide along that tissue. 
Okay, we're gonna get in, and I'm using the pad of my elbow. And we're going to slide on down. Good. And the next episode, I'll be working primarily the low back. So today, I'm just going to be focusing directly up in here, but I'll get some passes down the back. Get that elbow in there. And you want to distribute your weight by bending your knees and just leaning into the elbow. I'm not pressing firmly down. I'm just leaning and using my body weight in order to um, apply pressure into uh, the muscle tissue there. What we're going to do is take our elbow. And I'm right about, I start right there below the scapula, around T7. We're going to get a nice glide down here through the erectors. Good. Now we can go ahead and sink into that QL right here. do is come back up to the neck you know applying that amount of pressure in a deep tissue sports massage you want them to have a moment to settle back in you know everything tensed up real tight from the firm pressure and now we want to relax deeper into that restful state so we're up here making nice And now we're going to come back up and apply the same technique that we did before where we're working these, uh, the rhomboid attachment areas around the scapula, getting into the mid uh, traps. And I'm just going into this firm circular motion right here. And again, I'm taking my right thumb firmly into the tissue and I'm taking my other hand and I'm applying pressure and I'm gliding that forward. You really want to protect your thumbs, both of your joints and your thumbs. Again, nice firm and applying that pressure here through here. And what this is doing, it's really relaxing and warming the body up for the heavier, deeper uh, tissue pressure from the elbows. So we're working through just layers of getting them to relax to be able to absorb a firm pressure. Okay, we're going to take our fist. We're going to start here from the inside, uh, close to the spine, but not directly on the sp spine. And we're going to follow that trap tissue all the way down. We're going to, in here, we're going to feel that levator attachment. We're going to roll off of it. And be mindful of not putting too much pressure directly on the bone. If you feel that hard bone underneath there, back off. Allow the tissue some room to breathe to be able to absorb the pressure. And you really could use your body weight to move into that versus a lot of upper body strength. So we're colliding over the over the traps here, getting into that levator. And we all know that levator so problematic for so many people. You can roll off the uh, scapula here 
and the superior edge of the scapula and you can feel that attachment and you can spend some time working on that particularly using these two finger pads right here to uh, work around that attachment but be careful how much pressure you're putting directly on the bone that doesn't uh, ever feel too good we're going to put some circular motions going around there if you want to learn some more advanced uh, myofascial techniques, um, I have uh, courses available online that will teach you how to effectively release the levator scapula. And we're going to go down through here again. Gliding that fist over. Now we want to apply our nice firm pressure. And you really want to gauge where they're at. How are they receiving the amount of pressure that you're applying and make adjustments. A lot of times I'll close my eyes while I'm working on my clients just to get a better sense of how they're feeling. And I essentially see through my elbows um, and then able to make adjustments accordingly. Now what we can do is take the arm and place it behind the back. Now if you notice your uh, client that you're working on doesn't have that type of mobility, don't try to force them into that position. There's too many other things to do that you're going to learn here today that that's not necessary. But uh, in this case, he has good shoulder mobility, so we're able to comfortably put the arm behind the back and allow them to relax the shoulders. Again, what we can do, go up in here. Now we have a little bit longer of a, um, a lengthening of the muscles here. And that's something you'll see here in this video, how I work the shoulder in a lot of different angles to be able to manipulate the soft tissue. So again, nice circular motions. And we're going to apply more pressure down with this left hand, moving over these attachments. And, and this is just a warm-up technique here. Because what I'm going to do now is be able to go in here with my elbow. And again, it's a very sensitive area. We don't want to just be dredging through it uh, just to create pain and discomfort. We want to really be mindful of how they're receiving the amount of pressure that you're giving and adjust accordingly. I'll typically do three to five passes, just depending on my findings. If there's more tension in there, I'll spend a little bit more time. Now what we're going to do is bring the arm around and lengthen in it. And you can go ahead and set it on your uh, chair. I don't like to let the arm hang just because the blood will pool and it would just be, it's very uncomfortable to have that uh, numbness and tingling sensation start to occur. But what's nice is now all this muscle tissue is opened up in a different area, uh, just a different plane. So um, I want to go ahead and attack that from, from a different angle to open it up. So be mindful where the uh, scapula is located, both the superior border here, most importantly, because it's just a really small space. And that's about where I'm going to go ahead and start. Get in, and we're going to go ahead and move down towards those low traps. Now this one, I'm following the scapula's edge, I'm working around that. Going straight down alongside the uh, spine, 
but obviously not working directly on the spine. So I'm switching my angles, I'm going down, I'm going this way, and then I'm covering it this way. And I've mentioned uh, my courses, my more advanced myofascial technique courses. And in those courses, what you'll learn is more active and passive ranges of motion of how to work on the uh, rhomboid, both major, minor, lower lats, etc. And just for a little demonstration, working on the lower uh, trap here, what I'm going to have uh, my client do is start with his arm in this position and then he's going to straighten his arm out and he's going to rotate his thumb towards the floor and then he's going to go ahead and bring it back and we're going to apply our fingers tips right here on the low tr traps and we're going to have him extend the arm out Good. While I'm applying pressure and gliding over that muscle tissue, he's rotating his thumb towards the bottom. Good. And let's go ahead and bring that back. Just a little sample so you can get an idea of um, what learning more advanced myofascial techniques uh, look like. So now that we've finished working on the uh, you know, mid, upper traps, low traps, the rhomboid major and minor, now what we have available to us is the uh, infraspinatus, the posterior delt, and even getting into the lats and the uh, teres group here. So we have to be careful the amount of pressure that we're applying on the area, not pushing the muscle too firmly into the bone. That does not feel good. Um, you'll end up causing more harm than good. So what we're going to do is take our fist to start and we're just going to glide over that infraspinatus and getting into the ter uh, teres a bit and the posterior deltoid here. This little intersection right here, actually better, vis vis better visualized from here, you have the, tri the triceps. Let me say that again. This can be better seen right here where we have the triceps, we have the infraspinatus and the posterior deltoid and this quadrangular space is a common junction of uh, nerve entrapment and muscle adhesion. So this is an opportunity to just spend a little bit of time on working uh, on that. Um, it's not as effective as doing the advanced myofascial techniques where you're doing a lot of passive and action, uh, active motion to um, free that muscle tissue up and allow that nerve to glide more smoothly through the area. But this is a uh, nice little touch up if you're working on a, a client um, that's had that issue and you've resolved it, but you want to make sure you're managing it uh, during their uh, you know, pr uh, prehab visit. So we're just moving down, following the natural line here of this infraspinatus and deltoid. And I, in this section, I like to have the arm lengthen just to lengthen these structures here. Now we're going to go down here while we have this lat exposed. Using our fist again, we're going to glide along that lat. And I'm just going below the scapula. I, I, right here is the edge of the scapula. I don't want to compress directly on that, so I'm just going just below into this nice soft tissue spot. We're going to glide our fist through this area. This is a great technique if you have a lot, a lot of clients that surf. I'm here in Southern California, so uh, surfing is quite common, and uh, this really feels good for them and many active lifestyle individuals. But we're going to glide over that muscle tissue. 
Applying that firm pressure. And next we're going to go ahead and bring the arm to the side here in a bent position. And we're going to go back and apply some pressure over this infraspinatus. And you can really start to palpate in here to notice if there's any trigger points, see what the health of this muscle tissue, you know, feels like. Um, you know, start to form some type of uh, uh, diagnosis if they're experiencing shoulder pain. Um, this is a, a common overlooked muscle that uh, causes a lot of anterior shoulder pain. So yeah, I'm using my fist, gliding over this muscle tissue. Now more directly, let's work on this posterior uh, shoulder here. I'm going to come down right by where it, it got that nice valley here by the uh, tricep. And we're going to apply our thumb and we're just going to move up towards the shoulder here, going from a, a, a distal to a proximal direction. And you don't want to, you don't need to get in there too firmly and, and overdo it. Protect your thumb, protect your patient's shoulder. Um, you know, you, you have an, an ulnar nerve that travels through here too. It doesn't need a lot of pressure. It just needs a bit of a firm, uh, you know, work and attention on it. And we can get this tricep involved. And here, I just like to use an open hand, just going and effraging through here. We can take our fist and move from the elbow upwards towards the shoulder. Again, being very mindful with the amount of pressure, but we want some firm pressure. If you're working with athletes, they really require some firm pressure of you getting into that muscle tissue. Yeah, that is going to be the posterior neck and upper back and posterior shoulders. Uh, stay tuned and check out some uh, of the other videos where I'll be going into the low back, hamstring, some of the stretching and traction uh, classes as well. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, show me some love, hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next episode.